welcome all. Um, today we will talk about uh, the watershed and uh, the widest path problem and uh, what they have to do with each other. Um, watershed itself is a really old school algorithm. Um, so I don't want to say it has a stigma, but you know it certainly is uh, nearly as old as, as convolution and, and image processing. Um, so why would anybody care today? And uh, I want to give um, the following answer. Um, I have this press release here, three days old. Uh, you heard about this uh, Kinder Studio, this uh, children COVID study in our federal state of uh, Baden-Württemberg. Many parents, countless parents have anxiously been waiting for the outcome um, to see when school will resume. Um, and uh, luckily, you know, the, the findings uh, led the minister president to um, uh, announce the reopening of schools. Now, um, a total of 5,000 people were tested, um, always one child and one uh, parent from, from the same household. And um, when this uh, process was started, um, the ELISA tests available um, did not yet have sufficient um, specificity. And um, actually in the last few weeks, then uh, Roche came out with a new test um, with a better sensitivity and specificity. But so when they started, um, the clinic felt compelled to develop their own test um, based on um, an analysis of what uh, the blood serum um, of uh, people does. All right, and um, now on this uh, press release website, you, you see two things. Um, the result of the study, preliminary result, which is that um, out of the 5,000 people tested, only around 60 um, had uh, antibodies against the COVID. And uh, even though they were living in the same household, there were more parents than children. So the conclusion was that um, children are not a dominant factor in, in the spread of the infection. And there is a methodenbericht, um, a methods description. And if you open this, um, this is what you will find. Uh, and I'm mentioning it because um, the, uh, well, if you were sitting in the lecture hall, I would say that um, the first orders have been sitting in the very same lecture hall. Now you're sitting at home, I cannot say that. Um, but they're um, physics students from our department. Um, and uh, in general, um, quite a few of these uh, people here are um, from either Anna Kreshev's lab or, or my own lab. Some of you have seen Anna Kreshev um, last semester in the machine learning course. And um, so we had all these microscopic images and we were trying to determine if or not a person had antibodies uh, this needed to happen as quickly as possible and as reliably as possible. So if you uh, look in this paper um, somewhere in the supplementary, you see that uh, how it's done. Um, first, um, we segment the nuclei using a method called Stardust, um, really nice uh, method to detect nuclei and segment nuclei. Um, then we predict probabilities for each pixel um, to be cell boundary or not. And also, in addition, um, just a foreground background estimation. So uh, a typical semantic segmentation problem. And then cells were segmented by the seeded watershed algorithm, the method that we will study today. Now, um, why did we use watershed? Uh, well, it is a pretty algorithm, but we didn't use it because it was so pretty. <laughs> we uh, used it because, as I said, the problem had to be solved as quickly as possible and as reliably as possible. And uh, uh, when we started, of course, there was zero training data, um, just the microscopy images. And um, so people uh, from the lab, yeah, they're willing and able to annotate a few images, but not many. So it was out of the question um, to do a full deep, you know, end-to-end -end, uh, deep learning uh, approach. Um, instead, um, 
this was a mixture of a little bit of deep learning um, to detect uh, the nuclei here, uh, Stardust, a little bit of deep learning uh, to detect nuclei and for the foreground background segmentation. Um, but the rest was done using more traditional image analysis, computer vision methods. All right, and uh, one of these, the seeded watershed we'll talk about today. Um, so in a, in a bit more detail, um, these images have a few channels, uh, one showing the nuclei, um, one showing serum, and one showing virus marker. And um, you will see that there are many nuclei, but we don't have virus marker everywhere. And um, that was on purpose. Um, so um, those cells were infected only to a level where many, but not all, would be infected. And then you also see that uh, this serum response here, this uh, immunofluorescence, um, it is pretty bright in some cells, but not in others. And uh, indeed, if a person has antibodies, um, then those cells that are infected, those with lots of virus marker, will show up more brightly in this serum channel. Yeah? So it's a task of segmenting the cells, uh, deciding if a cell was infected or not, and then integrating this immunofluorescence response across uh, both types of cells. Um, I mentioned Stardust up here, and uh, this is work by Uwe Schmidt and Martin Weigert. Martin Weigert has just opened a new lab at uh, APF Lausanne, which will do amazing work there. Um, the cell boundary detection, you know, just a unit, and then what we will talk about today, the seeded watershed algorithm. Um, then uh, when you have uh, classified your cells, when you have segmented them, um, you can integrate this um, serum with, or let's say the fluorescence uh, in the infected cells and, and the non-infected cells. Um, of course, you need to normalize by how many cells are infected and how many are not infected. So, um, you know, I should have uh, something like a normalizing factor here. All right, um, then you can uh, build this ratio and then you come up with a number. Uh, and if you're above the threshold, then it looks like um, you have developed a good immune response. And if you're below, um, uh, then not. Uh, so um, either it's too early after onset or, or simply you have not had the, um, the disease at all. And it, it takes some time to develop the immune response. Uh, so uh, usually two weeks, for example, for IgG type of antibodies. Good. And um, now this was not the merit of the computer vision or of the seeded watershed, but but you know luckily um, the numbers were such that uh, um, the minister president announced that uh, schools and uh, um, kindergartens can open again. <laughs> means uh, you have more time to prepare lectures, you know, and uh, uh, give good lectures. Good. So um, this was one use case of uh, where a watershed, seeded watershed can be used. And we will now move to the algorithmics part.